Hi, creative friends. Today I'm sharing how to use decoupage art on your old dated wood furniture. So just let me get set up and I'll be right back. Let's start. Here's the fun part. Here's the salvage nightstand set I started with. I believe this set was thrifted from the 70s by my parents. And if my memory serves me right, my dad restained this set and finished it way back when I was in grade school. The top had a little staining. The front door was just hanging on by a hinge and there was contact paper that I believe my mother lined the drawers with. But overall, for such an old set, these nightstands are still in amazing condition. So I started by uh, busting out my heat gun and removing the contact paper from the inside of the drawers and on the bottom shelf. I have to admit it always warms my heart when I see line drawers because it means someone took the time to take care of their pieces. As you can see, it really doesn't matter how many years the paper has been stuck on, heat will remove it really easily. So if you ever have anything like wrappers, price tags, gum, wallpaper, contact paper, anything that has a stickiness or glueiness to it, heat will always remove it nicely. Once the last of the contact paper was removed, I pulled out the drawers and started taking off the old hardware. This included the handles on the drawers and obviously these weren't the original handles because there was double holes drilled in here. Also the hinges that held on the door and the clasp for the door. And once the doors were removed, I made sure to remove the hinges uh, because I'll be keeping this hardware for possibly another project. And I'll also be keeping these wood doors uh, for another wood craft as well. And here's what they looked like all stripped down. Now it was time for a good cleaning. I went ahead and added some white lightning uh, along with some water into this spray bottle. And I started by cleaning the insides of these nightstands and worked my way around to the outside. They have been in storage for years, years. So I just made sure to even get in the bottom to get out all the cobwebs. And after thoroughly cleaning them inside and out, I made sure to rinse the sponge in some water and get rid of all the residue. Also, here's a little quick tip to clean off any contact paper residue or any, uh, any sort of gook that you find in a drawer. If the white lightning or your cleaner doesn't get it off, take one of these painter tools and try scraping it off. I've used this painter tool to remove stickers. I've removed, I've used it to remove gum. Uh, here I'm using it to remove the leftover residue from the contact paper. And really it's a multi-purpose tool. It works for numerous things and I wouldn't want to be without it. I believe they cost around $10 on Amazon, but there are so many uses for it. So it's, it's a great tool to have in your toolbox. As you can see, it worked like magic. I let the nightstands dry overnight and I came back the next day and mixed up some all-purpose putty to fill in all the hardware holes. 
If you've watched any of my recent videos, you know I use Bondo a lot. And uh, it's a two-part system where there's the Bondo putty and then the hardener cream. And you mix in the hardener cream to the Bondo and then you have about 10 minutes to work with it. But here's a little tip as well. If you're in a rush, you can mix a little extra hardener cream into it. Uh, and therefore, it'll give you less time to work with it, but it'll speed up the time you have to start sanding, priming, painting, whatever else you want to do. If you have the little extra time, you can go a little leaner on the hardener cream and you'll have the little extra time to play with it. And then maybe you'll have to wait a little longer for you to sand. Another Bondo tip is uh, here, as you see, there's there's two holes drilled into these nightstand, uh, nightstand drawers because uh, well, I guess the original hole wasn't filled and a, a different hardware was just used to cover it up. So I wanted something strong enough that if I decided to put another handle on, which I did not end up doing, you'll see that it, it ends up being a knob, but I didn't know that at this time. So I want to make sure that my filler is strong enough that it will be drillable. Uh, and Bondo is just that. You can drill through it and it's it's not soft. It is tough as nails and it will hold a screw in there just fine if need be. So whenever you have larger holes to fill, Bondo is a fantastic uh, tool for that. Uh, it dries super hard, super tough, and it is drillable. I worked my way around the piece, filling in all the smaller holes as well. I have a full tutorial on how to use Bondo for repairs and filling holes, and I will include that in the cards above and also in the description down below. Once my filler had dried, I brought the nightstands into my sanding room and started giving them a good scuff sanding and also paying extra attention to smooth down that Bondo uh, to give it a nice smooth finish. Remember safety first. When you're sanding, even scuff sanding an old finish, be sure to wear a really good dust mask. You don't want to be inhaling any of this dust, whether it's Bondo dust or dust from a finish, uh, whether it's old or new furniture, just safety first. So after the two nightstands were all scuffed sanded and the Bondo was sanded smooth, I used a tack cloth and wiped off all the dust and now it was time to prime. Uh, I'm using my favorite BIN shellac base primer and here you can see how important it is to stir this primer because the shellac does end up separating and it really does need a thorough stirring before you start using it so you can amalgamate all the components in this primer to work properly. After I gave it a really good stir, I used my little Dixie cup, or, or it doesn't matter what brand it is, and I've measured out to three little cups work ideal in my paper plate. Everything I use when I use this primer is disposable because it makes it so much easier to use. And then cleaning really is a breeze. For this primer, I use the high density foam rollers to apply it. These ones are from Dixie Bell and I'm thrilled that they now actually offer um, these rollers. It's just fantastic. But I have noticed that these rollers working with the shellac base primer don't last quite as long as the other ones that I was buying. Uh, they will break down once you use them with the shellac primer for a certain amount of time. So you have to work very quickly. I went through two rollers, two rollers because the one ended up breaking down. So I went through two rollers, uh, a full pack, which includes two, as you can see, uh, to get all the primer onto these two nightstands. As you can see, I don't bother with a brush at all. I use the tip of the roller to get into the smaller little crevices of the drawer, like the lip of the drawer. I also use the roller on the sides and uh, it goes on beautifully. It, it really does. I find using uh, one of these foam density rollers uh, to apply BIN shellac base primer is super easy. And I also have a full tutorial on how to use this shellac primer which I will include in the cards above and also in the description down below. Now the funny part about 
me priming and actually funny, maybe not so funny, is at this stage of the makeover, I was not clear on what color I wanted to paint these nightstands. So again, I went ahead and primed the outside of these nightstands with the two coats. But then I decided to use deep sea silk all in one mineral paint. So priming wasn't a step that was needed at all. <laughs> so this was a real waste of product. And I don't know if you visited my last blog post or my last video, but here in Canada, this Bin Shellac primer is selling for over a hundred dollars a gallon. Um, so I, I was kind of kicking myself, but you know what? It's kind of funny. Lesson learned. This will teach me to pick my paint color or my paint before I prime. And I guess the bottom line is an extra couple of coats of primer never hurts. It never hurts for sure. So I went ahead and gave the primer a light sanding. And then I started play, uh, painting with the deep sea silk all-in-one mineral paint, which is this beautiful rich blue color. This silk all-in-one mineral paint is, just as it says, an all-in-one. It has the primer and the top coat already included. So watering it down is not recommended. However, I do like giving my paintbrush a light misting with my uh, spray mister just to make the paint glide on a little bit. It doesn't water the paint down at all, but it does make for really smooth, beautiful painting. And as you can see, the coverage is phenomenal. This is my first coat and it just looks so rich and beautiful. I went ahead and worked my way around this nightstand. And as you'll notice, I really use the tips of my brushes to get into the crevices and make that paintbrush really work for me. I work pretty fast with this paint, uh, but of course it's self-leveling. So you have probably a good four, four, three, four minutes or so to work with this paint, but I enjoy getting it on as quickly as possible. And then I smooth it out as you see me doing here on the side. Another quick tip when you're painting edges is go at them on an angle as I'm doing here on this drawer. I use my brush and I go in on an angle and this way no painter's tape is required if you're trying to do a crisp edge. Uh, after I get the paint on, I then go ahead and do the lips of the drawer and just make sure the paint is all evened out that way. And again, you can see here I'm using the tips of the brush to get into the crevices and the lip of this drawer. If you have a really good brush, good paint brush, uh, you shouldn't have any problem using all aspects of it. So the tips, you can use the big broad side, you can use the corners, and really it just makes a huge difference in how paint is applied. Once the deep sea was dried, uh, or mostly dried, I went in and I painted the inside of these nightstands in white cap. And white cap is also a silk all-in-one mineral paint. So no primer was required because the primer and top coat are already included. And yay, this is the way the paint is meant to be used. <laughs> Not with a primer underneath.
once I had the insides painted, I decided to go back and paint the legs or the base of these nightstands in the blue as well. Uh, originally, I was thinking it was going to be the same color as I painted the inside, but I decided no, that would look a little bizarre. And it just goes to show that as I'm working on these pieces, ideas are coming to me. I mean, often, and I've said this, I don't know how many times on the blog and in these YouTube videos, I start off with maybe a vague notion of where I'm going with these pieces. And as I'm working on them, it continuously changes. It really does. It's like the furniture kind of speaks to you and your original idea of where you thought you were going to go with it just goes out the window and it just wants you to do something else with it. So I just go with the flow. Often that leads to me maybe, you know, wasting a little bit of product or in this case, my primer. I know I keep going on and on about that, but ugh. <laughs> so I mean, often it doesn't work as smoothly as I would like it to sometimes, but I have to admit, I always end up liking the furniture better when I listen to my instinct and to the furniture. So I, I know listening to the furniture may sound a little woo-woo, but I always like the pieces much, much better when I go with the flow. And the reason that I mention this is I, I do know, and I have heard from a lot of you and other furniture painters that are just starting out where they think they have to be very regimented. You know, they want it to look like this. Maybe they saw an inspo pick and they, they need it to be exactly like that. But you know what? just try and let go a little bit and go with what your gut is telling you, what your creativity wants to do and what the furniture is dictating. And I guarantee you, you're going to be so much happier with your pieces. So I went ahead and as I said, painted the base and painted the second coat of blue on these nightstands. And because I was going to cover the inside of the stands with decoupage paper, uh, the white was only one coat. Now for the fun part. Well, the painting part was fun as well, but now for the real fun part. I found this colorful tile bells and whistles decoupage paper in my inventory, and it's been in my inventory for quite some time. I honestly did not know what to use this on. I'm pretty sure that they are either out of stock or possibly they don't even sell uh, this decoupage paper, paper uh, on the Dixie Bell site. Uh, however, there are are similar papers on Amazon and uh, Bells and Whistles has fabulous alternatives to choose from. So I'll leave a link below. Now, my original thought was to cover all, uh, all three sides plus the bottom in this uh, tile decoupage paper, but I did not have enough. So I moved on to plan B. And my plan B was to cut out these tiles and then actually tile the three sides and the bottom of these nightstands. And therefore I could leave a gap in between each tile, which would allow me enough paper, decoupage paper, to do all the sides and the bottom on both nightstands. These papers often have a little white border around them. So I started by cutting off the border and then the individual tiles. And here's a quick tip when you're trying to cut in a straight line. And it may sound silly, but I actually heard this on a YouTube video probably years ago, and it served me really well, even though it's so simple. When you're cutting, it's always best to keep the, the piece that you're cutting on a flatter surface. I know here I'm not because I'm kind of demoing for the camera so you guys can see, but ideally you keep it flat on a table. And when you take your scissors, you always look ahead to where you want to go. Just like a race car driver, they say when, when a race car driver is trying to get out of a skid, they're not supposed to look where they're going, but where they want to go because that's where they'll steer. It's the exact same way when you're trying to cut a straight line. So as I was cutting these tiles to get a super straight line, I was always looking at the top corner, the next top corner that I was going to. So I had a visual. I don't look where the scissors are cutting. I always look at where my cut is going to end up. 
to lay the tiles down, I went ahead and I measured the center of my nightstands just so I had a visual of where to lay down that first tile and to get it centered properly. To apply this decoupage art, oh, and I just want to mention, somebody in one of my other videos, uh, I'm guessing from the US, said it's not decoupage, it's decoupage. <laughs> Here in Canada, I think we say decoupage. I think in the States, you guys say decoupage. So leave me a message down below which one you prefer or how you say it in your, in your area or your country. I'd be very, very very curious. Um, so to apply this decoupage, I used a satin clear coat, which acts as an adhere, uh, like a, it acts like the glue to adhere the paper. And it also acts like a top coat. So I went ahead and brushed on a coat of satin clear coat onto the surface. Then I laid the decoupage tissue over the wet top coat, positioning the tiles exactly where I wanted them. Uh, and the little lines, the um, pencil lines that I added for the center was very helpful to start this off for myself. So I pressed the paper down onto the surface, making sure that there were no creases or wrinkles. And then I added or brushed on a little bit more top coat right over the decoupage tile to seal them in place. And again, this satin clear coat acts as the adhesive and also the top coat. I left maybe a quarter of an inch, maybe slightly more um, of a gap space in between each tile. And this went really quickly, like it went surprisingly quick. Uh, but the quarter inch wasn't exact. I'm not going to say that, you know, it turned out like real tiling, uh, but it, it doesn't have to be. I mean, once they were all laid down, it looked so stinking cute and charming. Uh, the gap in between, it didn't need to be 100% on all of them. It looked really, really cute. And I have to say, I had a lot of fun doing it. To do the backing of it, I found it easier to flip the nightstand on its back once I had the three rows of full tiles all laid out, I needed to cut some of the tiles for either side. So I did that with a mat and a quilt cutter, or I don't know what the, I think they're called quilt cutters. If you know what this tool is called, you can leave me a message down below as well. I think it's like a, a I think they're for quilts. And I ended up cutting the tiles uh, probably like an inch or an inch and a half. And then I added them on either side of the tiles that I had already laid out. And again, this is a perfect example of how my original idea of what I was going to do with these nightstands it just kind of switcherooed on me again. Because once I had the bottom and the backing all tied, I really looked at the piece and I thought, you know what? I don't want the two sides done, which is hilarious because I probably would have had enough paper just to do the bottom and the back. <laughs> so I probably didn't even need to tile it or cut them up like I did. But I just thought if I had done the sides as well, it was just going to look too busy. So what I did was I painted the two sides in the blue. Once I had the sides painted in the blue, I thought, perfect. This is more the look that I'm after. Uh, after that, I ended up adding some new hardware, which are these brass geometric knobs that I found at Hobby Lobby a few years back. And then they were all done. So here's the before. And here's the after. And they they really don't even look like the same nightstands to me. I am super pleased with the way this all came together, even though there were a few twists and turns along the way. Uh, I cannot wait to hear what you think of these nightstands and this makeover. And thank you so much for joining me today.
If you've gotten any value out of this video, please give it a like. It really, really helps the channel and it enables me to bring you more videos like this. Leave a comment down below and please subscribe or share this video with somebody who might be also interested in doing their own furniture makeovers. You can also find me over at salvagedinspirations.com where I have over 500 furniture painting tutorials teaching you how to make your furniture beautiful. Until next time, I hope you have a fabulous week. Bye guys.